Hey, what's up, guys? How you doing? This is Dan here with the Cigar Salute. I want to thank you guys for the overwhelming positive feedback I got on the last feature that dropped just over a month ago. Apparently, you guys like recommendation videos. Um, I knew that was a solid feature when I put it together, but I um, had no idea that you guys would react so strongly in a positive way to that um, recommendation uh, list video. And um, I'm really uh, humbled by the uh, response that I've gotten from you guys. And I uh, want to thank everybody um, and express my gratitude who um, took the time to watch the feature and uh, comment on it and uh, add their contributions in uh, terms of um, in regards to suggestions um, for the cheap and cheerful uh, section and whatnot. And uh, I'll certainly be passing those recommendations along uh, to those interested uh, who contact me. Um, it, uh, it's been a couple of months since I dropped the vendor bowl feature. And since then, this channel has been seeing steady growth. Um, in the past couple of months, my uh, subscribers have uh, gone up by about 10%. So uh, just on the cusp of 600 subscribers right now and um, over uh, 1,600 on Instagram. So uh, the numbers are continually climbing and I'm uh, very happy, flattered, and uh, humbled to uh, see that. And I want to thank you guys and I want to welcome all the newcomers to the community. And I want to thank everybody who took the time to request an invite to the Cuban Exchange 2.0 Facebook group. A uh, number of you guys have now joined up and you guys have been uh, participating and posting photos and uh, purchasing cigars and meeting new uh, folks in the Cuban cigar community. And uh, this is what it's all about, guys. And um, we got a lot to unpack in this feature tonight, okay? Um, given the fact that I have come into contact with uh, quite a few newcomers to the Cuban cigar community in the last couple of months and... Um, the uh, emails that I have received from some of you guys and uh, some of the scenarios that you guys have run into and uh, are discovering upon entry into the world of Cuban cigars. I think it's important to lay some of this stuff out in a feature uh, so others can learn and also um, as a uh, brush up for those who have been around for a while and maybe aren't really uh, keeping a close eye on the Cuban cigar community. And uh, I apologize if some of this information seems redundant, but I promise you it is all relevant. And um, it is uh, very important to um, pay attention to some of this stuff because uh, it's just, there, there's just some things going on right now that uh, it's just, um, it, it, it just disgusts me, you know? And, uh, the uh, the counterfeit stuff. It's the, these guys are getting better and better at what they're doing, and um, I want to thank uh, a newcomer to the community in this uh, channel, uh, Ray. Uh, we'll get into uh, the scenario with him in a little bit, but um, the focus of tonight's feature is going to be uh, do's and don'ts upon entering the world of Cuban cigars. Okay, so we're gonna get right into it. We got a lot to uncover tonight. And I'll be back in a moment. Welcome, guys. So we are going to start with, um, I think we're going to alternate between do's and don'ts this evening, okay? And uh, I will try and keep topics that are relevant to each other uh, bundled together. Um, I want to bring something to your attention real quick. Uh, the last couple of videos that I have dropped and on this video as well, there are timestamps in the description of the videos. I realize that the last uh, couple of videos in particular that I've dropped have been around two hours in length. And um, I'm not expecting you guys to fish through that entire feature to try and find a particular section uh, of topics being covered. So... If you click on the description and scroll to the bottom, you will notice uh, the features are listed in chapters and there are timestamps next to those features that are highlighted in blue. If you click 
on those highlighted uh, timestamps, it will bring you right to that point in the video. So I will do my best to break that down the same way for this feature. So keep an eye out for that. Um, I will uh, also try to list everything that I cover. Uh, it's just a lot of stuff. There's probably about uh, 20, 25 things at least. So um, if I have the room, then I will uh, make sure that I put a timestamp for it. So you guys, um, if you're looking to see a particular uh, list of topics covered or you're looking to see um, if you have a question and you want to see if it's answered in the feature, check the description uh, before you go crazy, okay? Um, and... Uh, even though uh, I think that everybody can get something out of this entire video, uh, whether you're a newcomer or a seasoned vet, um, if there's uh, just information that you're really not looking to uh, not looking to um, listen to at the moment, feel free to skip ahead to a part that uh, interests you or is relevant to you. But I would advise that newcomers to the Cuban cigar community watch this video in its entirety because there is going to be a lot of lessons I learned the hard way, um, things that I observed, and things that I was taught when I came into the Cuban cigar community. Um, and uh, I believe that if one practices the points that are illustrated in this video uh it'll really go a long way into having an optimal experience uh with your journey into cuban cigars okay so the first on the list of do's that i would recommend that anybody coming into the world of cuban cigars uh does and also uh even if you've been around for a while and are intimately familiar with cuban cigars i still recommend that you do this because it has enhanced my uh, Cuban cigar experience exp uh, exponentially. And that would be join an online Cuban cigar centric uh, community. And um, whether it's a uh, connoisseurs group or a sales group or, you know, a regular old message board, uh, as long as it is Cuban cigar centric, uh, I can't stress enough how helpful and useful and fun this is and how much it adds to the experience. Um, the uh, value of joining a community of Cuban cigar enthusiasts is immeasurable, okay? It, uh, <sighs> these communities are very tight-knit and word of mouth is how things are done in the Cuban cigar community. And uh, your word of mouth reputation is everything in terms of buying, selling, and um, knowledge and whatnot. So just keep that in mind. And uh, also the, um, the friends that you make in this community uh, will enhance your experience. And uh, I've made some amazing friends uh through this channel through the uh, facebook group through my instagram um some of these guys i've been friends with for a few years now and uh you know we're all uh you know most of us anyway um in the uh cuban cigar community are adults and uh, we all have responsibilities in day-to-day -day life and just being a part of a community like this is really special because it helps break up the monotony of the you know uh of day-to-day -day life and uh also too the uh breadth of knowledge uh that comes from some members of this community is uh nothing short of remarkable okay um it will go a long way to answering your questions and uh while it definitely helps to watch cigar salute and dr joe show and other cuban cigar centric um forms of media on youtube um this alone is okay, but, you know, having an entire platoon of Cuban cigar connoisseurs and aficionados and um, enthusiasts is really, really helpful, okay? Um, and uh, the connections that you'll make in the community, um, the access to cigars you may not have had access to otherwise okay i've had some uh i've had the opportunity to score some amazing cigars that are no longer uh in circulation um 
via the vendors for any sort of reasonable price if you can find them at all. And I have gotten some amazing scores by being a part of a Cuban cigar sales group on Facebook. Okay. And um, I highly recommend, uh, you know, a group that is like community based, like, uh, you know, like Facebook or the Friends of Abanos message board or something like that, because there is a certain sense of uh, accountability and whatnot that comes with a community like that versus an anonymous forum, more like Instagram. Now, I have some uh, dear friends that I have uh, met via Instagram, but in a sales environment, uh, word of mouth reputation is everything, okay? And the serious sellers do everything they can to protect this reputation, all right? On Instagram, it doesn't matter as much. And we'll get into Instagram later, but um, I cannot stress this enough. Joining a Cuban cigar-centric community um, is one of the first things that I would recommend a newcomer to the Cuban cigar community does. And uh, anybody that is not a part of some sort of online Cuban cigar community, uh, I highly recommend that you join one. Okay? Now let's move on to uh, a point off the list of don'ts. Okay, guys, first on the list of don'ts, okay? Now, the first on the list of do's was to join an online Cuban cigar-centric uh, community. And um, the first on the list of don'ts would be do not get your Cuban cigar education from an um, American market-focused uh, cigar community, okay? Okay. Um, you know, groups like uh, Cigars Daily Nation and whatnot on Facebook, um, you know, those are great for socializing and whatnot. But um, in terms of Cuban cigars, the uh, amount of misinformation and vitriol towards Cuban cigars is very, very high. And you are not likely to get um, an optimal uh, answer to any of your questions um, outside of, you know, there are a handful of uh, Cuban cigar enthusiasts who know what they're talking about on there. Um, and I've met a couple of really cool Cuban cigar guys on that group, but um, I would not go there and expect to get any sort of knowledge on Cubans. Um, it's just not the environment for that, okay? And um, that segues into a lot of different things, which we will break down shortly, but I would highly advise that if you are somebody who enjoys American market cigars and if uh, you've been smoking American market cigars for a while and you've recently made the jump to Cuban cigars, keep your American cigar uh, community, um, keep your American uh, cigar uh, enthusiasm to the American cigar market uh, forums and um, that's where you can discuss those kinds of cigars. But I would highly recommend that you... Um, keep uh, talk of Cuban cigars off of these forums because um, A, you're just going to stir up controversy. B, you're going to run into a lot of people who are just straight up ignorant in terms of um, their perception of Cuban cigars, their knowledge of Cuban cigars, and you're going to find a lot of uh, political diatribes and all this other bullshit that you just really don't want to deal with and you really don't need to deal with. And um, you really just... You know, I understand how it is, um, you know, when you first get into Cuban cigars, it's very, very exciting and you want to tell people about it and your friends that already smoke cigars that haven't made the jump yet, uh, you want to get them to take the jump with you. But um, people will do what they're going to do when they're ready and not sooner. So just try to keep that in mind and... Um, you know, focus, it's, you know, I understand, it's it's almost like if you've been in a part of an American cigar-centric uh, uh, online community for a while, you know, trying to find a whole new uh, forum to talk about your newfound um, enthusiasm for Cuban cigars, it's almost like changing schools in the middle of the year. So I, I do get it, but uh, I can promise you that the Cuban cigar community online is a very warm and welcoming one if you are... Um, if you approach it humbly and, uh, you know, with uh, with an open mind, uh, I can promise you that, you know, it's some of the um, 
warmest and kindest individuals that you will meet online. So that is the first on the list of don'ts. And uh, we will go straight into point number two, because I think it's this important to keep these two things together because they are related so closely. And number two, and this is a big, big thing, guys, because I have seen this scenario play out quite a bit recently in the last couple of months. I've been introduced to several of you guys over the last six months due to this exact scenario. And this is unfortunately how I come into contact with more people than I'd like to see happen. Um, and the scenario plays out like this. Do not ever buy Cuban cigars from an American cigar shop, okay? In six and a half years of smoking Cuban cigars, collecting Cuban cigars, and researching Cuban cigars online and otherwise, I have yet to see a single legitimate Habano be sold on American soil in a cigar shop, okay? I need you guys to understand this. I don't care how well you know your tobacconist, how long you've been shopping there. Um, I don't care if you went to fucking elementary school with your tobacconist and he was one of your groomsmen and he kept his mouth shut about that blowjob you got at your bachelor party. Um, and, you know, <laughs> I, I don't care how well you know him and how well how much you trust them, Okay. You cannot do this because it will lead to you just getting face, okay? I have yet to see a scenario where somebody who has contacted me about cigars they got at an American cigar shop, I have yet to see anybody with authentic Cuban cigars. And even if they are authentic, um, you're getting middlemaned, Okay. Even by the, the, some magical chance that you found the one honest uh, American tobacconist uh, that is selling genuine Cuban cigars, um, they are selling them at a markup to you, all right? Now, this channel, we have spent extensive amounts of time covering um, resources where you can uh, procure genuine Cuban cigars, and I have given you all the tools that you need to do so. So you do not need to go through middlemen to get your Cuban cigars. You can go out and get them yourself. So do not get tempted if you see a box of what looks to be Cuban cigars on the shelf at a cigar shop on U.S. soil, because I can promise you that they will not be authentic in 2020. Now, this might be a little bit of a controversial statement because I know that I have some um, seasoned vets on this um, that watch my content. And I know that in the 1990s and maybe 15 years ago, it may have been different. Okay. But back in the 90s and whatnot, in the early 90s, um, buying Cuban cigars online in the States was not a thing yet, really. And um, back then, maybe it was a, a different thing. I wasn't around. So I can't really speak on it one way or another. I do know that um, my Uncle John, who is a, uh, a fan of Cigar Salute and uh, a big fan of Cuban cigars recently, um, who uh, watches the channel. Uh, what's up, Uncle John? He, uh, he tells me that a uh, tobacconist uh, local to me, up the block actually, uh, used to sell him Cuban cigars back in the early 90s uh, right behind the counter. So uh, I can promise you that he's not doing that today. Um, and the game has changed considerably. And I think more times than we'd like to admit that American uh, tobacconists that carry these knockoffs, I think they do so on purpose, to be honest. Um, I think that they do it to sell them to their customers to turn them off to Cuban cigars because, you know, you spend, I've seen uh, fake uh, Cohibas um, at a uh, tobacconist in Wisconsin that they were selling for $60 a piece. And uh, the barcode came up as Jose El Piedra. Uh, the barcode was something you would see in like 2010 or 11. And uh, the photos were from a couple of months ago. And um, 
you know, what's going to happen when somebody takes one of these cigars home and smokes them? It's going to be, <laughs> you know, they're never going to, you know, who knows the next time they're even going to think about trying a Cuban cigar. Um, hopefully, they're at least just, you know, um, you know, Cuban uh, custom rolls that are dressed up as cohibas or something like that and not floor sweepings or some shit like that. You know, because you, you never know what the scenario is going to be when it comes to fakes. You never know if it's going to be just upgrade fakes or just straight up floor sweepings, pubic hair and dead bugs. You know, we've seen some nasty shit inside of uh, counterfeit cigars. So you really just want to avoid that scenario. Um, we'll get more into this in a little while. But um, just please, guys, I need you to drive this through your head. Your tobacconist can be a great guy and you, he can hook you up with some amazing Padrones and Fuentes and you know, uh, all you could carry every boutique brand under the sun, but um, I can promise you that there aren't any tobacconists that are willing to risk their uh, license, uh, risk getting jammed up with the IRS and the ATF um, about selling uh, contraband Cuban cigars. Because uh, while I've yet to see anybody get in any real trouble for uh, illegally importing Cuban cigars for their personal use, um, there is news clipping searchable online for uh, cigar retailers for selling Cuban cigars, okay? So knowing that the, there is this risk to selling Cuban cigars uh, on uh, U.S. soil, um, I really can't see any um, sane person with a uh, tobacco license doing this, okay? So just take a moment and think about it, and uh, just really, please, if there's any warning that you're gonna heed, please. Um, we're gonna show a few pictures right now just to drive my point home, okay? Um, a recent uh, acquaintance of mine, uh, Josh, his wife purchased this gift set at globe smoke shop in syosset right here on long island in new york okay he's a you know it, the box is really pretty it's you know got romeo and juliet it's got monte cristos it's got cohibas and partagas and whatnot except that this gift set doesn't even exist and uh the vitolas that this uh box is showing for some of these brands you know that's not the right cigars at all okay so these are completely counterfeit and this shop was selling them and um this poor guy's wife uh she wanted to do something sweet for her husband and for the holidays you know goes to the uh cigar shop and buys these uh what she thought was cuban cigars and then he comes home you know um whatever holiday uh i don't know if it was hanukkah or christmas whatever it was and, uh, you know, he, he's excited and he posts the photos on a American market, uh, cigar forum on Facebook. And, um, you know, he had to be told that these were fakes. Okay. And luckily he got a refund after he went in there, um, uh, guns hot and, and, you know, chewed the guy out. But, uh, we, uh, we got to stop this from happening. And the easiest way to do that is to make a hard rule no Cuban cigars at American shops because it's just even tobacco. I'm ashamed to say that I know personally um, Miguel, who is the owner of Village Cigar Headquarters in uh, Patchogue, Long Island, New York, and Babylon, Long Island, New York. Uh, I want to give a shout out to the Chard Dog on Instagram for sending me this photo of a fake Cohiba Siglo 6 that. Um, was given to him that was procured at Babylon Village Cigar Headquarters. Miguel, man, I am disappointed in you, bro. Like, look at this. What is this? Come on. You know better than this. Hey, that's a Seglo 6? Seriously, bro? So, I, the, uh, the amount of vitriol that there is for Cuban cigars in American shops, um, I mean, some shops... They don't even want you smoking Cuban cigars there or talking about them. And uh, we'll get into that a little bit later. But um, we are going to introduce a new weapon in fighting counterfeits uh, in American shops. Okay? And I need your help to do it, guys. You guys are going to be part of this with me. All right? 
just like you guys help propel the content of the channel, this is some next level shit we're about to get into right now. So I want you guys to meet Mr. Peach. <laughs> Mr. Peach is going to be paying a visit to Miguel at Village Cigar Headquarters and Globe Smoke Shop in Syosset, New York, um, on a card along with uh, photos of the fakes that they have been accused of selling, and it will be made aware to them that they have been exposed for doing so. And uh, hopefully that's enough of a message to get them to cut the shit. But um, if you guys are out and about at your local tobacconist and you find that there are counterfeit Cuban cigars being sold there, then please take a photo so I have proof of it and get me the name and address of the shop and I will be mailing them a card just like this. And hopefully they'll get the message after that. Because you know what? If you sell Cuban cigars, fake Cuban cigars, at an American cigar shop, you're a fucking dick. Okay? You disrespect the culture, you disrespect Cuban cigars, and you disrespect your customers by doing this. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. But uh, we're going to uh, come right back. All right, guys? All right, guys, so um, we're going to segue into another topic for now, and um, this is a big, big question that I get a lot, and um, there is uh, a lot of uh, aspects to this uh, next topic we're about to cover right now, and um, one of the biggest pieces of advice that I give to newcomers who are placing their first order of Cuban cigars is to rest the cigars uh, for at least a couple of weeks in their humidor after they receive them in the mail, okay? So the next uh, do on the list is exercise patience and learn and understand the process of acclimation, okay? Acclimation is different from aging, okay? Acclimation is the process of the uh, cigar stabilizing in your humidor after it is placed there. Uh, it's the period of time in which the uh, different uh, tobaccos inside of the cigar all need to level out, get even with each other, and uh, the moisture content needs to equalize with the moisture content of your humidor. And we always... Uh, say that Cuban cigars do much better uh, between 62 and 65% relative humidity um, versus the uh, standard 70% that uh, is touted in every uh, cigar publication in America, okay? And the reasons for this are multiple, all right? So to understand acclimation, let's talk a little bit about how cigars are rolled, all right, so in Cuba, they use three primings of tobacco, and a priming is um, a leaf that is on the plant, like uh, there's uh, Velado, Seco, and Lajero, okay? So to identify the leaf, they identify it uh, on the location of the plant. So Velado leaves are at the very bottom, Seco is at the middle, and Lajero is at the top, all right? Now, the closer to the sun that leaf is and the more sun it gets, the stronger it will be. The strongest leaves are at the top, and they are the Lajero leaves. They are the thickest, oiliest, and highest in nicotine content leaves on the plant. Next down are the most balanced leaves, and those are the seco. The seco leaves have a uh, medium amount of nicotine, and they are also uh, blended into the cigar to uh, create uh, a good aroma while they're burning and to balance out the uh, strength of the cigar and make it more uh, finessed. And finally, at the bottom, we have the velado leaves, which the velado 
is added to fill out the cigar and help it burn properly, okay? Now, some brands don't even use Lajaro leaves. They say that Cuaba cigars do not use Lajaro leaves, and I know that the uh, El Rey del Mundo regional, uh, the uh, 2018 uh, Great Britain regional, the uh, La Reina, did not use any Lajaro leaves either. Now, when the cigar is being rolled, the thickest leaves, the Lajaro leaf, is placed in the center of the blend. The Seco wraps around the Lajaro leaves, and the Velado wraps around the Seco, and then the binder, and then the wrapper, okay? So you have the thickest, most oiliest, and moist leaves in the center of the cigar, okay? And um, after tobacco is fermented and uh, right before the cigars are about, to, the leaves are about to be rolled into a cigar, uh, the leaves are moistened again to make them more pliable so they don't break during the rolling process, okay? So it is that act of wetting the leaves again before you, uh, they are rolled that creates uh, part of the need for acclimation, okay? Now, a lot of people ask me, Dan, how come American market cigars don't need this whole thing, but only Cuban cigars do? Well, that's a great question. And it's not that American market cigars don't need this process. They absolutely do. It's just that we do not see this process in American market cigars um, because of the different politics and culture of the Cuban cigar industry versus American market uh, cigars in Central America, okay? Um, your average Central American cigars that are owned by uh, an American uh, company, there is a large machine in that company that generates a lot of capital and has a lot of capital. So when uh, cigars are rolled at a Central American factory, whether the company owns the factory or uh, the company contra uh, contracts a factory to roll the cigars for them. There is enough um, capital and funding from that company that the, uh, the cigars, after they're rolled, the company can wait to uh, recoup their expenses from having those cigars rolled and they can afford to have those cigars placed in an aging room for usually a minimum of 90 days uh, sometimes. Uh, it's usually between um, three and nine months that a cigar, uh, that cigars will uh, sit in an aging room, which is a cedar lined room and uh, usually they're placed in bundles of 50 um, naked in a, uh, a cedar lined room on shelves. Um, you know, and it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, kept in, uh, humidor like conditions and what those cigars are doing at that point is exactly what I described earlier. The, uh, tobaccos inside of the cigar are stabilizing with each other and the moisture, um, that was, uh, accrued during the rolling process is slowly dissipated. And, um, this is, uh, what we call the sick period at times. So if the cigars have excess, um, ammonia and tannins and whatnot, they uh, quote-unquote sweat them out during this period. So by the time that these cigars go through this um, acclimation process and then they are uh, shipped out, you know, into master cases after being boxed up and whatnot um, and then, you know, exported to the States and wherever else they may go, uh, by the time they hit the retailer shelf in the States, those cigars may have had, you know, Depending on the caliber of cigar, the high-end American market cigars, I mean, a Fuente Opus X can go anywhere between, you know, just under a year to, you know, two or three years. You know, whenever Carlito thinks they're ready is when he'll release them to be boxed up and exported, okay? And, you know, you have to respect that about companies like Fuente is that they do not rush uh, their products, and that's part of... Um, why they have that model, we will never rush the hands of time uh, because they understand tobacco to the point where they will not put out something that they feel like it can't be enjoyed on the spot the day you get it. Um, they want consistency, and this is a mantra that most American uh, market um, 
cigar companies uh, hold. And um, it, uh, it really is a marvel of, uh, of the industry, of the American market uh, cigar industry. Uh, and you have to respect it, the, uh, the amount of patience that uh, they're afforded to be able to have, okay? And um, you may ask, why does, not, you know, does Cuba do this? And the answer is yes and no. Okay. Um, after cigars are rolled in Cuba, they are placed in one of these cedar rooms in bundles of 50 for about a week. That's right, a week. Okay. And at that point, after a week, they are considered smokable. But even by Habanos Essay's own accord, the longer you wait, the better. Okay. So. Even after a week, um, the cigars still have to get boxed up, okay? Now, after they are boxed up, they are given their, um, the uh, boxes are given all their uh, dressings and everything like that. They go to uh, a central warehouse where they will receive their warranty seals, um, and at that point, they will be crated up into master cases, and exported, so there's still a, a you know a few months of a time period between when the cigars are rolled and when they may hit the shelf, but it's not nearly as long as the American market. Okay, um, so this process of acclimation. Now, on average, a box of cigars that you get from your typical online vendor, uh, it will probably have at least five to eight months of age on it, maybe longer, um, depending on the popularity of the cigar and whatnot, um, by the time it reaches your doorstep. So, you know, most of the sick period is gone by that point. And uh, I, haven't, I haven't smoked a cigar that was like truly in the sick period in a very long time. Okay, it's been like literally a couple of years at least since I smoked a Cuban cigar that was ammoniac tasting and, and tannic tasting and whatnot. But um, you can tell a cigar is still acclimating when you go to light it and it's not burning properly. It's not staying lit. It's not t uh, drawing well and it's it tastes acrid. Okay. And that's not necessarily the sick period. What that is is the cigar needs to acclimate further because you're trying to burn that cigar and smoke it and there's that thick, oily lajero leaf in the middle that is still damp and it's probably damper than the rest of the cigar. So it needs time to dry out, okay? And that's another reason that uh, we, uh, that we uh, always recommend that Cuban cigars be stored at a lower relative humidity than American market cigars because that will speed up the amount of time it takes for that uh, center leaf to uh, thin out, dry out, and whatnot. And once that leaf uh, dries and becomes equally, uh, uh, has moisture content that's equal to the rest of the cigar, uh, the cigar will open up and breathe substantially better and it will burn substantially better and the cigar will essentially be ready to smoke. And at this point is when the cigar really begins the maturation process, okay? Um, in my opinion, I notice a very large difference uh, to the point where, like, you know, they ask how, you know, when does aging benefit the most? I would say between years one and three so if you buy a box of cigars and uh, you smoke one a year from the box date and then you smoke another one three years from the box date the difference in those cigars will be extremely remarkable and it's a it's an amazing thing to see what maturation does for tobacco okay and my does it do wonderful things for cuban tobacco so you know i have people hitting me up all the time, you know, and, and some people even say like, Dan, I think I got fakes because these things burn like shit. They don't taste that good, but you know, they smell so great and, and they, you know, they look great, but I don't understand, you know, I, it won't stay lit or anything like that. I got them two days ago and they were in the mail for three weeks. That's the other thing too. You know, um, unfortunately, you know, these retailers overseas, 
the way that they get cigars in the country without being stopped 99% of the time is the way that they ship them. And you'll notice a lot of vendors, it takes a couple of weeks to get here from where they are overseas. And the reason, you know, obviously, you know, when we pay for it, we could pay for two days shipping overseas and it will get there. Okay. But uh, the way that these guys ship is the way that they have determined is the best way to get stuff here under the radar without it causing a problem for them and us um, because it's a pain in the ass to have custom snack shit. It holds everything up and it just, you know, it's just better just to wait a couple of weeks, you know, with the way that things are in the, um, the system that we have in place for shipping. You know, it's a tried and true system. It's been working for a couple of decades already and uh, I don't see it coming to an end anytime soon. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. But um I cannot stress enough. I know I uh I know I just unloaded a lot of shit on you guys, but I cannot stress enough that uh when you get a box of cigars, especially if they were in transit for two or three weeks, because I can tell you right now that the amount of temperature and humidity fluctuations that take place while these cigars are in transit, they get their asses handed to them. And um, those cigars are in real need of some R&R by the time they reach your doorstep. So um, just exercise a little bit of patience, and I promise you that you will be rewarded uh, a thousand times over for having uh, patience for a few weeks to... to wait and light these cigars up um you know most vendors if you look on their frequently asked questions they will say flat out well we recommend that you wait 30 to 60 days to uh before trying any of the cigars and they'll say lay them down you know that's a common uh phrase uh lay them down to rest or lay them down for 30 to 60 days now um this is a, a point of frustration for a lot of folks that are just getting into the community. And this ties into um, point number one, where I said join a Cuban cigar centric uh, community and sales group. Because while you're getting these boxes from the vendors, you can also go on the uh, cigar clubs and you can procure from other enthusiasts aged cigars that have already gone through the acclimation process, already gone through the maturation process. So you can have some nice aged stock to puff on while you're waiting for your cigars to acclimate that you ordered from um, overseas. And getting into a cycle like that is essential for uh, you know, optimal enjoyment of your cigars. And I understand, especially, you know, a lot of guys that come from American market cigars, um, they get real frustrated sometimes with the amount of like do's and don'ts with Cuban cigars. And they're like, why the fuck am I bothering with this? You know, I can just, um, you know, I can smoke Fuentes forever and never have to deal with any of this garbage. And that's true. You really wouldn't really have to deal with any of this stuff if you stuck with American market cigars. But, um, let me just remind you that 95% of Cuban cigar smokers in the States did not start with Cuban cigars. They got here at a point in our cigar journey, just like you're getting here now at, your, at this point in your cigar journey. Okay, It's very rare that people just jump right into Cubans without having some experience in the American market cigar um, game for at least a couple of years first, okay? Um, and the point of it is this. It's a very simple thing. The flavor uh, profile of Cuban cigars cannot be replicated anywhere by any brand outside of Cuba, okay? And just like Nicaragua and Dominican Republic and Honduras, they have their own signatures to their tobacco. Uh, Cuba has theirs as well. So... At that point, it's going to have to be your decision. Um, and you may not have, uh, we call it uh, my Habanos moment, okay? It took me two and a half years of smoking Cuban cigars mixed in with American market cigars to have a moment where I'm looking at the cigar that I'm smoking, which I'll never forget it. It was a 2013 Punch Punch. Uh, it's a Corona Gorda. And um, it was uh, 2016, right around the time I started making videos and uh, 
I lit up this punch punch and about five or ten minutes into it, I started getting these incredible floral notes. And I had bought the cigars um, while they were like, you know, fresh off the truck. I bought them in early 2014 and they were 2013s along with a uh, three pack of uh, Cohiba Robustos. Uh, and I bought them from Cigar One, by the way. That's how long I've been using them. Um, and I had been aging these cigars myself. In 2014, when I started buying Cuban cigars, uh, I used to call the, the method in which I used to buy them, I used to call it Noah's Ark, because I used to say, get two of every cigar uh, brand that interests me. And um, that's what I did. I bought you know pretty much two, two cigars from every brand. I, I tried to buy at least two cigars of all like the legendary uh, Vitolas that people talk about, legendary brands that people talk about. And I took people's advice, because don't forget, um, my Cuban cigar teacher basically was Dr. Joe. And Joe was real big on like the two year rule. You know, Joe, um, you know, he would tell me, you know, listen, you know, like you just got these cigars, like let them sit for a while, blah, 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 this, that, this, you know, two years used to be like, really like, um, the gold standard for how long one would wait to try a cigar two years from the box date uh, is when they were considered to be like really at starting to hit their stride. And uh, luckily we live in a time right now where um, 2018, 2019 uh, Cuban cigars, um, you know, I had some 2018s that were smoking great at five or six months. I had some 2019s that were smoking great at five or six months and they just keep getting better and better. So we're not getting... Um, you know, people that are coming into it now, they don't have to wait nearly as long as they used to to be able to um, have a great Cuban cigar experience. But, um, you know, I promise you that the majority of you that are giving this a shot now, uh, at some point, you are going to be smoking a Cuban cigar and you are going to look at it and be like, holy shit, this is what they were talking about. And um, once you have your Habanos moment, that's it. You know, you will never look at other cigars the same way again. Now, you may find that, um, you know, some people are still um, on both sides of the fence more than others. For a long time, I, I was on both sides of the fence. And uh, I don't hate non-Cuban cigars. I just don't enjoy them nearly as much as I enjoy Cuban cigars. And uh, I just actually, I, I smoked an Illusione yesterday, uh, Illusione Fume de More, which is a good cigar, uh, beautiful construction and wrapper. Um, but, you know, I'll say that Illusione used to be my favorite cigar brand, and they're not even on the radar for me these days because I just enjoy uh, the Cuban cigar profile just that much but more uh, than anything else. And, um, you know, if, if it's not your thing, it's not your thing. But, you know, if you're giving it a chance, then that's all one could ask, you know. Um, as long as you're enjoying the cigars that you're smoking, then that's all that matters, whether they're Cuban or not. But um, to have the best Cuban cigar experience possible, try different brands. You know, don't be afraid to, to branch out, but exercise patience uh patience in anything cigars whether they're cute or not will always pay off okay so we'll be back in a moment welcome back guys okay so we're going to uh answer another question that i get quite a bit um from folks that are uh, curious about Cuban cigars. And um, this isn't so much a problem with people who are already entrenched in the Cuban cigar community, but these are, uh, this is really something that, uh, another way that I wind up coming into contact with uh, newcomers a lot of times. And that is, um, okay, so you have a relative or a friend or a coworker that is traveling abroad and they ask you if uh, you'd like them to get you some cigars while they're there, okay? And I'm going to say, just as a rule, it's a hard no, okay? First off, 
unless that person is a Cuban cigar enthusiast, do not trust them to follow your instructions and buy them from a um, authorized official outlet while traveling abroad. And depending on what country you go to, this is so, so important, especially, especially Cuba proper. Okay. There are more counterfeit cigars in Cuba than almost anywhere else on the planet, maybe next to like Costa Rica. All right. Um, you cannot, cannot rely on people to follow your instructions to the letter and be inconvenienced with going to a La Casa del Habanos. Because understand that um, cigars to somebody who is not a cigar enthusiast, uh, a cigar shop can be a very intimidating environment. Um, I've gotten uh, emails from a lot of uh, wives and girlfriends of uh, cigar enthusiasts who ask me if I know of a source online that they can order cigars for their husbands or boyfriends or whatever because they are um, nervous about going into a cigar shop. So to ask somebody who is not involved with cigars at all and has no real passion or enthusiasm for cigars to um, go into a cigar shop in a foreign country is a pretty tall order. And it's going to seem like an easy decision for that person when um, the tour guide or the host of the Airbnb or the um, the taxi driver in Cuba offers to sell them cigars. And odds are that these individuals will not understand the level of depth and trouble that um, counterfeiters are going through, okay? And another big thing to consider is that even if you send them down with pictures of what an authentic Cohiba band looks like or Monte Cristo band, um, understand that in Cuba, a lot of the fakes are becoming upgrade fakes as people become wiser to the um, how the, the cigars are supposed to look. Uh, they have gotten better at uh, scamming you. And what they are doing now is stealing authentic bands or recycling authentic bands and boxes. And... Um, People just don't understand the importance of going to an official outlet. And uh, there's plenty of guys online that will tell you that they have gotten, um, you know, they've had uh, relatives or, or co-workers or friends come back with boxes of fakes despite having given that person um, warnings about counterfeits and warnings about people trying to, you know, uh, hook uh, cigars on you know at the beach or whatever or wherever you know on the streets so you know it's just you guys know where to get the cigars now get them from um reputable vendors with the strong word of mouth reputation and if you're in part of a sales group get them from the sales group where the word of mouth reputation protects you and uh the administrators of the forum protect you okay um it's just not worth the few dollars that you'll save getting the cigars, um, you know, and risking uh, having them come back with a box of glass tops, okay? And uh, that's the other thing too, guys, is that now that you guys have multiple reliable lines uh, on sources for Cuban cigars, that does not mean that you have to become the de facto uh, Habano S.A. distributor in your circle of friends, okay? Um, I've seen this happen, and, and people have, have uh, tried to put me in this situation before, coworkers and whatnot. Um, you know, I've done a couple of box splits with coworkers that have gone over well, but uh, one coworker in particular, you know, he is not a newcomer to Cuban cigars. He is a, a big fan of Bolivar, and um, he, uh, you know, he, he knows a Cuban cigar when he sees one. But the thing is, is that, you know, after I did a couple of box splits with him, you know, he was asking me to order him this box and that box and this box. And I was like, well, I got it off this website, you know, so you can order it. You know, like uh, I'm not placing an order anytime soon. Um, when you start doing favors like this for people, it essentially they're putting you on the hook for that transaction, okay? And um, while every retailer that I discuss on this channel 
um, that I purchased from is solid and has a package replacement guarantee. Um, what winds up I've seen happening is is people, uh, you know, let's say something goes wrong with the transaction. Now, a lot of times people won't give you the money until they have the cigars in hand. But then, you know, if they're not satisfied with something or they don't like it, they're not going to pay you. They're going to tell you to go return the box of cigars. And it's just, it's an unnecessary hassle. You do not have to be responsible for uh, supplying others with Cuban cigars. And the only reason that anybody would do this is if you're middlemanning them and making money off them. And if you're a good friend, you shouldn't be doing that anyway. Um, it mean, you know, it's your business to do whatever you're going to do, but I would advise, um, to avoid p potentially putting strain on relationships and friendships. Um, if somebody's interested in purchasing Cuban cigars, then you can point them in the right direction, but you do not have to assume that burden. Okay. Um, because it just, it might, it might, it might create complications for you if something goes wrong with the transaction. All right. Moving on, friends. So those who have been with the channel for a while understand the uh, finest Cuban cigars fiasco. And um, the reason I was so um, loyal to finest Cuban cigars for so long is that um, the advice of my Cuban cigar mentor, Dr. Joe. Um, when I first got into Cuban cigars, I was ordering from a Canadian site. And then when I met Dr. Joe... Uh, Dr. Joe told me about how Swiss sources for Cuban cigars were substantially cheaper than Canadian ones, and the first site he referred me to was Cigar One. Now, um, my very first order with Cigar One was uh, seized by customs, and uh, while I did get the replacement package, um, I had told Dr. Joe about the situation, and at this point, Dr. Joe was becoming um, very, very involved with Finest Cuban Cigars, and he passed the resource on to me. And one big piece of advice that Joe used to tell me uh, when we would email each other is that, you know, find a reliable source that sells quality cigars and build a relationship with them and use that source. Don't go bouncing around from vendor to vendor. And he has said that before in videos as well. So I kind of took this to heart. Um, you know, Joe and I used to email each other pretty regularly, and he taught me a lot. And, um, you know, I have to say that, you know, now years later into my Cuban cigar journey, I have to disagree uh, respectfully with my, uh, with my uh, teacher because after seeing the fiasco that occurred with Finest Cuban Cigars, um, where we have a... Uh, vendor who was once heralded uh, as being a very high quality um, gray market supplier of Cuban cigars. Uh, I mean, we've all seen Joe's videos. I mean, the Trinidad Fundadores, the Siglo 6, the, uh, you know, I mean, how many, you know, the Lusitanias, the 50 Cab Ramon Iones, the, the Hoyo de Monterrey Epicure Number 2s, I mean, the, uh, the Pacific Anniversary Jar cigars. I mean, how many great cigars have we seen come uh, from finest Cuban cigars on Dr. Joe's videos, you know, so I saw the logic in what he was saying. And I tried to carry that mantra onto this channel after Joe vanished. And I tried to kind of pick up the pieces and keep it going, you know, what he started. But, um, I have since, uh, changed my entire outlook on this. And, um, there is a very good reason why I gave you guys, five lines um on cuban cigars online okay i gave you guys a, a line on five reliable reputable sources for cuban cigars and i use uh every single one of those sources and um i utilize them in a fashion where i am always monitoring monitoring the uh the sales at each vendor and i take advantage of that i mean like i said in vendorable cigar one changes sales weekly i've gotten some beautiful boxes from them recently guys um i'll uh i'll show them off at the end of the video or something after we get into like the uh conclusion uh just you guys gotta see some of these boxes i've gotten i've gotten a couple of great boxes from cigars of abanos and uh pure express recently as well 
Um, just some beautiful, beautiful cigars that I've uh, been able to score recently. Um, but, uh, you know, you want to have more than one uh, source for uh, genuine Habanos um, that you can rely on because, God forbid, uh, and I don't think it'll ever happen, okay? Every single person on the list of... Uh, Vendors that I gave you, save for I Havana's, they've they, they're a relatively young vendor, but they're extremely popular, and I don't see anything, um, any foul play occurring with them either. But uh, you know, Rob from uh, Friends of Abanos, Ravi from uh, Cigars of Abanos, and uh, Mark from Cigar One, and uh, you know, Pure Express has been around since the '90s. Cigar One's been around since the '90s, as well as Ravi and. Um, Rob Ayala, they've all been around since the 90s. These guys are um, very, very high up and connected in the Cuban cigar community, and they've served thousands upon thousands of individuals over the years, um, and their reputations uh, precede them. So if, God forbid, you know, something ever happened, I'm not even just talking about counterfeits, just if something happened, and this vendor was no longer able to do business, um, you know, with U.S. clients or something like that or whatever. You know, just you never know what kind of scenario is going to occur. But it always pays to have uh, multiple avenues to procure your cigars, okay? Um, don't just stay with one vendor all the time. Different vendors are good at different things. And every vendor has their advantages over another. And every vendor has their disadvantages compared to other vendors so um for more information on that uh vendor bowl is the comprehensive uh vendor tutorial on how i use my whole system and everything like that so uh if you guys have any questions about that obviously feel free to you know reach out to me via email or instagram uh the uh, contact info is in the video description and uh i'd like to remind you if you haven't subscribed to the channel please do so if you haven't added me on instagram please do so um i uh truly appreciate the support but um it pays to have um you know a, a handful of reliable sources especially when you start running into things like out of stocks, when you start running into things like uh, sales and whatnot and uh, regional additions. I mean, we have vendors that cover um, various regions across the globe. Uh, and if you're somebody who's interested in stuff like reason, uh, regional additions and whatnot, um, it pays to have uh, different vendors who have access to different stock. Okay? So we'll... Uh, <sighs> We'll continue to move on, and we'll be back in a moment. Hey guys, welcome back. So, just as I advised to uh, join up with a uh, Cuban cigar community online, um, and a sales group online, and to uh, uh, secure yourself uh, multiple lines on... Uh, on uh, authentic uh, Habanos online to uh, procure uh, multiple uh, reliable sources. Um, conversely, I will say that um, if you are a part of any uh, American market centric uh, cigar sales groups online, I would advise strongly that you avoid purchasing Cuban cigars from individuals uh, in these environments. Uh, even if they uh, seem to have a uh, decent amount of knowledge of Cuban cigars. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, the reason for that is that another way that I wind up coming into contact with a lot of people, and um, I want to give a, uh, a shout out to uh, Ray right now. Um, Ray recently... Uh, sent me a photo of a uh, Cohiba Maduro, whom he uh, he had purchased this uh, Cohiba Maduro from uh, an individual that he met on the uh, Spirited Smoke uh, pseudo social media site, which is a uh, 
cigar centric, uh, almost like a like a MySpace type site. Uh, very cool concept. Um, it is uh, owned and operated by uh, Brian Desind, the uh, owner and uh, founder of Pravada Cigar Club. Uh, what's up, Brian? If you're watching this, um, Brian has uh, watched uh, Cigar Salute uh, before. He's commented on the channel before. And uh, Pravada Cigar Club is uh, growing uh, in the uh, short amount of time it's been around and it's uh, becoming very popular. And uh, there are a good amount of uh, users of this uh, uh, social media site that he has created. And the concept is very cool, no doubt about it. And um, while they're not completely anti-Cuban over there, uh, let's remember that uh, Brian is a seller of American market cigars. So you really uh, want to limit the amount of uh, Habanos talk over there, okay? Um, treat it the same way that you would treat Cigars Daily Nation or a group of that nature, okay? Um, it is just best to keep Cuban cigars with the Cuban cigar community and American market cigars with the American community. And uh, the reason for this is that uh, Ray uh, sent me photos of the band of this Cohiba Maduro that he got from an individual on this uh, Spirited Smoke website. And um, it is a fake, okay? And um, when Ray contacted the individual who sold him these cigars, uh, the individual had no clue that these cigars were fake, okay? Uh, recently became acquaint uh, acquainted with a, uh, a young man named Greg, and Greg was sold a fake Bahike 52 for $100 from a fellow user of uh, American Market uh, Cigar uh, Forum. And uh, I've seen a lot of these uh, fake Bahikes going around, and uh, they're getting uh, sold all over um, American Market Cigar uh, groups, um, you know, whether it's through private messaging or whatever. But... Um, Generally, people who are knowledgeable of uh, Cuban cigars to the point where, you know, I would feel comfortable buying from that person, you're not really going to find a whole lot of those people frequenting um, American cigar forums. Um, the Cuban cigar enthusiasts who would be knowledgeable enough to trust to buy Cuban cigars from them, um, they tend to frequent the Cuban cigar forums, Okay. Um, and if, you know, there are Cuban cigar enthusiasts that might, you know, dip their feet in the pool on both sides, but I can promise you that they're not selling, uh, Cuban cigars on any sort of large scale to, uh, individuals in American market centric, uh, cigar environments. So you want to avoid, uh, getting involved with people on that level in those communities, you know, um, you know. In short, buy your Cuban cigars. Uh, if you're going to be buying on the secondary market from private individuals, um, do so in the appropriate environments to avoid scenarios like scoring a Bahike like this. Okay? That's a $100 cigar. All right? And that's a $100 fake cigar right there. All right? And, uh, you know, the other thing is, too, is that, you know, when you discover that you get burned on the secondary market, you really don't have a whole lot of recourse um, in environments like this uh, with under the table transactions like this one that took place here. You have this protection of word of mouth in a um, monitored uh, group like the one that I help administer with uh, my buddies Anthony and Mike on uh, Cuban Exchange 2.0. Basically, anybody, if we caught anybody selling some shit like this, um, they would be blackballed and um, we would get the word out to other groups, uh, their admins, and we'd let them know that this guy was peddling some bullshit. And, uh, you know, the thing is, too, the sad thing is, is that if anybody was around who had some real know how on Cohiba Bahikes or, or Cuban cigars, they would have been able to spot that in five seconds and they could have talked the kid out of the transaction. But uh, unfortunately, um, the problem that comes with 
you know, information being able to be exchanged on the internet so fast and, you know, these sales groups being able to whip shit up on the fly so fast is that, you know, individuals who aren't closely following Cuban cigars in the market, they're not aware of how good the fakes have gotten. So, you know, if you know what a Cohiba Bihike looks like just from what you've seen on Cigar Aficionado's website or, you know, um, you're not going to be aware of how good the fakes have gotten. And, you know, the, the you're going to see the holograms be like, oh, it's all good. You know, like, um, you know, I, can't, I hate to keep bringing it up, but Cigars Daily Nation, I watch it all the time. Uh, at least, you know, four or five times a week, somebody is posting a photo of a Fugazi uh, Cohiba and they are uh, asking, oh, guys, you know, is this real or fake? And nine times out of ten, it's it, it it never fails the uh the the cigar aficionado article on how to spot a fake cohiba gets linked onto the uh thread and that fucking article is bush league at best okay first off they made an error talking about uh the Bahike um band having holograms in the uh gold rockers that adorn the top and bottom that flank the top and bottom of the band uh there are no holograms in the Bahike band on the gold rockers that flank the top and bottom of the band, only the um, ones on the Linea Classica and the Maduro line and the Signal line, okay? Um, the Bahike bands have solid gold rockers flanking the top and bottom. And, uh, I mean, for Cigar Aficionado to make an error like that is pretty fucking <laughs> sad, you know? So you really, um, you want to stay with where the knowledge is for the particular subject that you're dealing with. You know, um, if you were really into Opus X, there is a specialized forum for Opus X. You wouldn't go to a Cuban cigar forum trying to buy Opus X. You would go to the Opus X forum. You know, if you were trying to buy Padrones, you wouldn't do that on the Cuban cigar forum. So you got to apply that logic um, when it comes to, you know, Cuban cigars and American sales groups. Um and I promise you that any deal that you're finding there, um, if it's legitimate, you can find probably the same deal or better in a Cuban uh, cigar-centric uh, group. All right? So just, you know, I know it's uncomfortable. Like, we, you know, we use the uh, analogy of changing schools before in the middle of the school year. But um, I can promise you that it won't be a difficult transition and the amount of uh, things that you will learn, the knowledge that you'll pick up, the connections that you'll make, the uh, resources that you'll obtain by joining one of these communities, I promise you that you will get comfortable very, very quickly uh, when you join one of these communities. And um, to segue into my next point, okay, and this is something that a lot of people fall for as well, and uh, just because somebody is Cuban does not mean that they automatically know about cigars, okay? And just because somebody travels back and forth uh, to see their family in Cuba a few times a year and comes back with cigars that are from Cuba does not mean that they are authentic Habanos SA export-grade uh, cigars, okay? Um, I see this happen quite a bit, and uh, my man Brock, who I just want to shout out real quick, uh, Brock sent me a killer fucking sampler last week. Uh, just completely schmacked up my mailbox with this uh, beautiful sampler. I mean, look at all these heavy hitters that uh, Brock sent me, man. I mean, you got uh, some of my favorites too. Monte Petit Edmundo's, uh, Cohiba Esplendido, Cohiba Exquisito, Panatella, Robusto, uh, Bolivar, um, Bellicosos Finos, and Royal Corona, uh, the Partagas, uh Serie D number six. Oh my God, that was an incredible cigar. One of the best Partagas I've smoked in a long time. Uh, the same with the uh, Upman Half Corona, which I got a story about Upman Half Corona coming shortly. But um, you know, thank you, Brock. And uh, you know, these are the kind of individuals you meet in the Cuban cigar community. But uh, Brock, he uh, was offered last year, and I discussed this on my Vendable pregame video. Um, an individual client that he dealt with at work who uh, traveled to Cuba, came back with two boxes of Esplendidos. And I believe he was a uh, individual who, um, you know, he was a Cuban-American with family in Cuba. 
and he travels there back and forth there frequently. And he came back with two boxes of Esplendidos and uh, tried to sell them to my man Brock for $450 a piece, which is, A, uh, we knew something was up off the bat because that's $100 below, uh, more than $100 probably, if you can even find an Esplendido in Cuba. But that's about $100 below what they would sell for in Cuba right now. And uh, also, too, just by how the stickers were uh, were affixed to the box um, and the absence of an outer protective uh, cardboard shell for a box of Esplendidos in 2019 was uh, red flag after red flag after red flag. And uh, looking back on it, the knowledge I've acquired since I had put out that video last summer, I now understand the serial number system better. And looking at the serial number on that box, it was a number that you would expect to see in like 2008, 9, or 10. Um, somewhere in that period. It's not something that you would expect to see in 2019. You would never, ever see it in 2019 uh, on a 2016, you know, 17, 18, or 19 box of cigars. So um, having that little bit of know-how um, and wherewithal uh, saved, you know, Brock almost $1,000 in that scenario. But all too often... Um, and I see, I see people, you know, they, they, they get seduced uh, by the promise of uh, rare and unobtainable cigars, okay? I want to show you guys a photo right now that was taken by somebody who was uh, recently attending the Habanos Festival down in Cuba. Take a look at all these uh, regional uh, editions and uh, limitadas, okay? Take a look at those uh, Cohiba Navidosos. You know, those look great, right? The bands look... You know, authentic as fuck. There's just no, there's no tells by looking at the cigar sitting on that bar right there. Okay. Until we learn where the cigars came from. All right. Those cigars are all counterfeits and they all came from a fucking plastic bag from this woman that was under the bar. She would sell cigars. Uh, I believe the Cohibas were $20 a pop. And she pulled them out of a giant plastic bag filled with cigars, like, you know, like, like a giant, like, fucking shopping bag, uh, just sitting under the bar. And I can promise you that there are no legitimate Habanos, ex, uh, Habanos SA export grade uh, cigars packaged this way, even in Cuba. All right. Anything that's sold in a shop in Cuba that's a Habanos SA product has been through the factories, it's been through the warehouse. Okay, they they still have all the seals. They still have the warranty seal and whatnot. Um, the seal, I think, might be a little different, um, like the holograms for a domestically sold product. And uh, one thing I've also learned is that products sold in Cuba uh, supposedly are being frozen now. It used to be only exported cigars went through a, uh, a freeze treatment to uh, counteract tobacco beetles and other pests. But... Um, I have heard now that domestic uh, sold product in Cuba is treated this way as well. Obviously, this does not apply to custom rolls. Um, and I would still advise that you always freeze your cigars, um, no matter who you got them from, where they came from, because you just have no control over uh, the conditions that those cigars were exposed to. And just because a box of cigars is frozen upon export, uh, that does not mean that they can't become reinfested somewhere else in the chain of custody okay and um as you build up a collection every box you buy adds value to your collection and it doesn't take that long for your collection to reach in the four and five figures um and there's individuals that i know that their collection reaches well into the six figures so you know even one cigar um that isn't freeze treated um it has the potential to be a trojan horse filled with uh, cigar-eating marauders to raid your humidor and pillage, plunder, and rape and uh, ruin your collection. And you just, it's not worth the risk, guys. You know, it really, it's a simple thing. It's easy to do. It doesn't affect the flavor of the cigars. And uh, it basically, it's an insurance policy because now that you have personally frozen the cigars, you now know that they are protected from pests. Um, that you are protected from pests at this point, as long as you keep them in contact only with cigars that have been freeze-treated, okay? But driving back to my original point, 
don't ever, ever buy cigars from somebody who claims to have a hookup inside of Cuba. I don't care if they tell you they have a cousin that works at the factory. I don't care if they tell you that they know somebody high up in the Cuban government. I don't care if they, if you're, you know, if you're banging one of the fucking rollers and she fucking passes you off some shit. Okay, just, you know, stop, stop, stop. All right, just do not do it. Okay, I have never seen the scenario play out where somebody tells somebody that they have a hookup in Cuba, and I've never seen that person get any legitimate cigars. Okay, the same way I've never seen anybody get legitimate cigars from an American cigar shop. I had a kid hit me up last year, uh, Danny TSS on Instagram, and um, and let me just say, guys. Don't ask a question about authenticity of a cigar if you're not willing to accept the answer if it's unfavorable, okay? Because if you come to me and ask my opinion, I am going to tell you the fucking truth, all right? And when I get an email like, you know, Dan, I just moved from Northern California to Southern California. Can you recommend me a cigar shop here that'll sell me Siglo 6? Because I, you know, I saw your video where you were talking about sources online, but I don't want to pay 30 plus dollars per cigar for a Siglo 6 uh, when the shop I used to live near in my old neighborhood was selling them to me for 15. And I said, you were getting Siglo 6 for $15 a pop, huh? Um, yo, do you have any pictures of those cigars? I'd like to see them. He sends me a photo, and this is the photo that he sends me. Don't buy cigars from an American cigar shop, guys. So when I tell Danny TSS that that is not an authentic Siglo 6 right here, and I send him this photo of the band of an authentic Siglo 6 that I had smoked the week before, Danny TSS became Danny PMS, and he started PMSing all over my inbox before I blocked him, all right? Um, and the last thing I said to him, I said, join up with a Cuban cigar group online and post photos of the cigars that you sent me and see what they tell you, okay? Some people have to learn the hard way, all right? And there's been things that I've learned the hard way. And the reason I make videos is so you don't have to learn the hard way. And I'm telling you that it will be the hard way if you fall victim to some of these scams, okay? And it's easy to become seduced. Some of these people are creative as fuck with their stories. Uh, there's a guy named uh, Lazaro Victores out of Tarpon Springs, Florida. Um, and Mr. Peach really needs to pay, fucking pay a visit to them. Um, him and his fiance because he has got quite a few people snowed with his whole fucking fabrication about him sneaking cigars out the back door of the factory with uh, via his family in Cuba and he does have family in Cuba and I'm sure that they do work a tobacco plantation but the thing is this is that he is not getting any large quantity that he can uh, have a commercial business with he is not able to sneak any cigars out in that kind of quantity where he can sell you boxes of Siglo 2s and Siglo 6 and all these other uh, high-in-demand regionals and um, limitadas that haven't even hit the shelves yet. Just like I showed you the box of really good-looking cigars or the, or the handful of really good-looking cigars that came out of a plastic bag, that's what this motherfucker is selling. You understand? Okay? But yet he's got so many people that just don't want to hear it. They got fucking cotton in their ears. And no matter how many people tell him, there are groups devoted to exposing him. And we have photos. Like, look at this, okay? Let me just say right now, Cuban cigars will never, ever, ever, legitimate Cuban cigars will never, ever be sold to you with the um, stickers stuck inside the box uh, ready for you to apply. The stickers are always applied on the box already the warranty seal is always applied on the box already why the fuck would it be called a seal if it's not sealing anything the warranty seal seals the box and that is the way of knowing whether it's been opened or not okay there's no shrink wrap on any of these boxes they don't come with shrink wrap ever okay if they come vacuum sealed or something that's the merchant that sold you the cigars uh 
vacuum sealed it or shrink wrapped it to preserve the cigars during transit. That was never done at the Habano Sese um, by uh, Taba Cuba. Uh, and, you know, it was never done in Cuba on the distribution end there. Okay. So you guys need to understand that. Don't get seduced by individuals with their crazy uh, stories. And no matter how convincing they sound, I don't care. And if the cigars taste good, you know, listen, they're not completely lying. They are Cuban cigars, but they are not the cigars that you're paying for. Okay. Um, more often than not, they are upgrade fakes where they are, um, you know, custom rolled uh, Cuban cigars rolled by a, uh, a uh, farmer. And um, they sell usually for about $5 US a piece. And these individuals are buying these cigars by the bundle and they are stealing real bands and banding them up and, and dressing them up as something much more expensive. Okay. So even if you light one up and you taste it, it's Cuban and it has an unmistakable Cuban flavor, you're not getting a legitimate Cohiba. You're not getting that, um, that Monte Cristo Supremos that you paid, uh, you know, primo money for, okay? So just get it out of your head, and you got to, and this is something I've been saying for years, you got to lose that bargain hunting mentality, and you got to stop thinking that you're going to be the special guy who's not getting ripped off, and who's going to get this magical hookup that everyone's going to be jealous of. No, just <laughs> be smart, guys, please. All right, uh, and, and it just seems like some people have a real hard time understanding this. And, um, you know, finally, uh, we get into, uh, and this is something we've touched on before. Um, I, it, honestly, guys, outside of there's a couple of Instagram sellers that have a very strong word of mouth reputation. And this is, again, why it's so important to join a uh, Cuban cigar community online because they'll be able to tell you who the legit players are online in, on Instagram and whatnot. Um, there's one that I've dealt with, and uh, he's actually asked me uh, because he's tied to a physical tobacco shop over in Europe. Um, you know, I have an individual who will, um, I can order cigars from him basically like Chinese food. He will pick them right off his shelf, uh, send me a pay link, and I pay him like that, and then he puts them... Uh, via FedEx, and he overnights them to me, right from his shelf to my doorstep, okay? So there are some great opportunities to network on Instagram and get some great connections. Um, and this is another reason I could say with certainty, um, you, know, ver uh, you know, verifying the uh, authenticity of the cigars that we receive from the retailers overseas because they match tobacco uh straight from the shelves, you know, from tobacco in Europe, okay? Um, but, um, for as many legitimate heavy hitters, you know, there's a thousand scammers. And, uh, my friend Howard was taken, uh, earlier, uh, last year, but, uh, for a box of, uh, Trinidad Topaz, not the re-release, uh, that was, uh, dropped a few months ago. Uh, with the other two Vitolas from uh, Trinidad, but the original 2016 limited uh, edition release, um, my friend Howard was taken by uh, R Cuban Cigars uh, on Instagram. And I don't even know if they're around anymore. I know that they blocked Howard and myself, and uh, Howard was trying to get the word out. Uh, and I'm getting the word out now on his behalf that uh, R Cuban Cigars is not a legitimate... Um, seller on Instagram. And uh, the problem is, is that Instagram is ripe for fraud because you have folks from all over the world and it's a photocentric platform. Um, and I myself, I mean, I post photos of my cigars all the time and I've got photos of some expensive cigars up. I mean, uh, just today I put up a photo of uh, La Cepcion, Don Jose, and that is a box that is, uh, if you can find an intact box, it is retailing for well over $1,000 USD right now. Um, so, you know, anybody can screenshot that photo, crop it, and then put it up on their page and act like they have those cigars in their possession for sale. And that's what happened with my friend Howard. He spent, he sent these people $400 um, via bank transfer, and they never sent him any cigars. So, um, you know... 
you're going to see people that are waving a giant unicorn flag in front of you. Uh, I, I brought up that All Things Cigars merchant um, a few months uh, last summer. You know, I caught him red handed uh, advertising that he sold a fake box of uh, Cohiba Lanceros from the 90s. Okay, uh, that box was confirmed uh, by somebody with decades, decades of Cuban cigar experience that lives in Portugal. Uh, to be a fake, and it turned out that the box was already in the U.S., and this guy was advertising to be from Portugal. Um, somebody that watches this channel placed an order with him for a box of uh, Bolivar Libertadores, the uh, LCDH exclusive, and they came from Switzerland, okay? And for as many legitimate suppliers that there are in Switzerland, there's just as many fake dealers, if not more. Uh, Royal Habanos, um, Swiss uh, Cuban cigars, Cuban cigar online. Some of these sites operate out of like Panama and Costa Rica and stuff, and um, but there's a ton of them in Switzerland too, and um, you'll note them right away because they have uh, most of them have substantially lower prices than um, acceptable minimum, you know, minimum retail price for these cigars. And uh, some of them gotten smart and raised their prices accordingly to try and blend in with legitimate sites, but. Uh, Word of mouth is the absolute strongest thing that you can have uh, as a Cuban cigar merchant online, okay? And that's something that you really need to pay attention to. And unless you uh, like, you know, throwing darts with a blindfold on, then you really should link up with a community of folks who can point you in the right direction. So don't get seduced by you know people waving unicorns in front of your face don't get seduced by low prices uh that seem you know just way out of league with everybody else's prices uh there's a lot of education you got to get with cuban cigars to really navigate the blur uh with uh efficiency and it takes time nobody learns everything overnight but if you stick with the principles uh and uh, heed the warnings uh, issued in this video, then you will go a long way to avoid ever having any sort of major hiccup in your Cuban cigar journey. So we'll be back in a moment, okay? All right, guys. So we're getting into the home stretch now. Uh, we got a few more points to go over, and... Um, I realize some of this information might seem redundant or repetitive, but I cannot stress its importance enough. So um, we're going to uh, say right now, uh, another advantage of being a part of a Cuban cigar centric community is that the strength of word of mouth of that community is everything. And this reflects, and it is more important than ever. And you will understand when I get to the end of the feature and what I show you guys, um, as to why this point that I'm about to speak about, uh, it's more important than ever. And that is source is everything, okay? The only way to ensure to the point where you are not going to get any fakes with reasonable certainty is to purchase from reputable sources, Okay, if you use any of the five sources that I have shown you in my vendable feature, you will never have a reason to doubt the authenticity of those cigars. Okay, like I had said, all of these merchants have been in business for a long time um, and they're all extremely popular. And uh, none of these merchants would risk their reputations in the community to make a quick buck. Okay, and that is, um, it's almost like a self-regulating system and it's a self-enforcing system, all right? So take advantage of the connections you will make and the information that will be shared with you by being a member of these communities, all right? And another thing to take advantage of um, as a member of a Cuban cigar-centric uh, club or forum or whatever, learn the power of the box split. Okay, I spoke about trying a variety of Marcas and, uh, you know, Vitolas um, earlier, 
And uh, one way that you can build up a collection with a lot of variety is box splits, okay? Being a part of a Cupid Scar community online will give you knowledge of the market. And a um, quick example, okay, I had a viewer who was obsessed with the idea of getting Cohiba Bihikes last year. And he emailed me, he had to be a dozen times asking about Cohiba Bihikes. And this was probably a few weeks before I get, uh, purchased a box for myself. And um, after I got my box of uh, Cohiba Bihike 52s, I had sent him photos of the cigars and I let him know where I got them. And he did not want to use that particular avenue because he wanted to buy singles of the Cohiba Bihike before he committed to spending the money that a box costs, which I can understand that. But the thing is, you have to work with the market um, and the uh, current climate in terms of the market for Cohiba Bihike. Uh, the cigar is in extremely limited numbers and the demand is extremely high. And nobody is having a problem selling bihikes in boxes. Um, and very, very few merchants are breaking up boxes to sell in singles, if any at all. Because people are, you know, having enough time, hard, hard of a time getting uh, full boxes. Okay. So this individual, I had suggested to him several times to do a box split with, uh, you know, friends, coworkers, whoever, because, you know, let's say a, a box of Cohiba Bihike 52s uh, is currently retailing for around $800 USD. Um, if he got, you know, three other guys to um, kick in with him, you know, he could get two or three cigars for, you know, 200 or 250 bucks, however he worked it out. You know, and if he split with, you know, two guys, um, you know, he, he could, uh, he can kick in, you know, $275 and get three cigars or whatever, you know, however he wanted to work out the math and the odds and evens of the numbers and whatnot, um, you know, 10 cigars, three guys, 10 cigars, four guys, you know, um, either way, it's not hard to get a few guys in on a you know a box split like this and i've seen people do this with uh, expensive regionals and whatnot um box splits and, I, and i've done box splits too uh my man stebold and i late last year we uh split a box of siglo two around thanksgiving and uh that deal worked out perfectly you know uh each of us got uh, about a dozen siglo twos uh for under 150 bucks so i mean can't argue with that you know, so if you don't want to commit to a full cost of a box, do a box split. Simple, right? You know, uh, this individual who was uh, on the hunt for the Bihikes last year, and it's not the same one who I spoke about last summer, uh, the guy who uh, wire, uh, wired uh, 800 bucks over to the All Things Cigars uh, merchant um, and... Uh, wouldn't send me any photos of the cigars afterwards. Uh, to my understanding, he no longer does business with that merchant. And uh, he uh, wound up getting another box of Cohiba Bihikes. I wonder why, you know. He, uh, I don't speak to him anymore, but that's not the individual I'm referring to in this scenario right now. I will say that this individual contacted me a few months ago um, trying to uh, lay it at my doorstep because he had a miscommunication with Cigars of Abanos over uh, Cohiba Bihike singles. And um, if he had heeded my advice to begin with and did a box split with a couple of guys, it wouldn't have happened. But um, it's not my job to carry water for these merchants, you understand? So something goes wrong with you and them, you take it up with them. And uh, we'll, we'll dive into that in a little bit because uh, I have a little scenario to unpack for you guys. And uh, I'm just going to say that, you know, you got to uh, adapt to the current market when the situation requires. So uh, don't be afraid to get social with uh, fellow enthusiasts in the community that you join up with, because um, it will definitely pay in the long run for you to do so. 
uh, when it comes to shit like this, you know, box splits and, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, when you have, when, when you have friends, everything's easier in a, in an every aspect of life. When you have friends at work looking out for you, things are easier. When you have friends in your neighborhood and your friendly neighbors, you know, things are easier. And it's the same thing with cigars. When you have people looking out for you, things are always better and things are always easier. So, um, just uh, get the most out of your experience, all right? All right, guys. So um, a couple more helpful tips. Don't ignore regular production uh, standard uh, Cuban cigars in Habano Sese's catalog. Um, and always jump for those fancy double-banded regionals and edition limitadas, okay? Uh, these cigars have become extremely popular. Um, the uh, advent of the uh, Fuente Opus X uh, over 20, you know, 25 years ago now, uh, that was really like the first like super collectible uh, cigar. Um, and, you know, cigar collecti uh, collectibles are somewhat of an American phenomenon. And when Habano Sese um, merged with Altadis, now Imperial Brands, the first thing that started coming out within a year or two of the merger was Edición Limitadas. And in 2005, the regional edition program came along. And then you start seeing, you know, Reservas and Grand Reservas and whatnot. Um, all of these gimmicks... They, uh, the cigars they fetch for exponentially higher prices than regular production cigars. And, um, you know, we as Americans with American market cigars, um, we are taught from the beginning of our cigar smoking career that the more money that you spend on a cigar um, is supposed to equal the caliber of the higher caliber the cigar will be. You know, um, and you look at you know, a uh, a three dollar uh, Drew Estate factory smokes is not going to smoke as well as a Liga Privada. That is eight times the price. A uh, a Padron two thousand or whatever number they use. You know, a standard Padron is not going to be nearly as good as a Family Reserve. Okay, and you're going to pay you know five times more for the Family Reserve than for the standard Padron line. And you're paying for the extra aging of the tobacco and the quality of the tobaccos going in and whatnot. And the, uh, you know, you see, like, the more money you spend in American market cigars, that the higher caliber of cigars that you will get. And I will say right now that you want to put that mentality on the shelf when it comes to Cuban cigars, okay? Um, you can get some incredible, incredible Cuban cigars for under $10 a piece. So don't always jump to those super fancy regionals and edition limitadas um, where you're paying $550 or $700 for a 10-count box of some of these cigars or a 25-count box. Um, you know, there's plenty of very affordable regular production cigars that will satisfy you just as much okay now you're entitled to buy whatever you want but don't always assume that you're gonna get a superior cigar because you spent extra money on it okay and many of experienced uh, cuban cigar enthusiasts will tell you the exact same thing that um the amount of money spent does not automatically guarantee that you're going to have you know some kind of mind-blowing cuban cigar experience okay so um, you know, all these points kind of tie into each other, but, you know, like I said earlier, you know, you want to try different Vitolas, you want to try different brands, you want to get as much of a lock and as much of a uh, calibration on where your palate's at as you can. This way you can make the best possible purchase and smoking decisions, all right? So don't get seduced by the unicorns of any type, whether it's somebody telling you they have a relative in Cuba, whether it's somebody telling you they can get you a discount, or somebody telling you that, um, you know, that these cigars aren't good, or these cigars, um, 
aren't worth the money or whatever. Only you can make those decisions about, you know, the caliber of a cigar and how it tastes to you. But at the same time, you know, don't automatically uh, jump right over uh, some of the less expensive niche brands in favor of buying like the super fancy shit. Okay, because you're not always going to get a better experience, in my opinion. Um, I'm not a big uh, regional and limited edition fan, but uh, a lot of times what you're paying for uh, with those cigars is the rarity. And they're the same exact blends, but the uh, tobacco is aged for a couple of years first. Um, and uh, it's put into a Vitola that's not currently available for that marca. Okay, for the uh, regionals, and as far as the limited editions go, um, you know, just uh, don't get seduced and assume that they're all going to be like you know, magic because uh, I've had plenty of regular production cigars that I would take any day over most uh, edition limitadas or regionals. I've never truly like been blown away by an edition limitada. I mean, there are some great regionals. But I certainly would never neglect regular production in favor of uh, grabbing regional editions and uh, other expensive uh, limited run cigars from Cuba. Um, Habano S.A. are marketing geniuses and they are constantly coming up with uh, gimmicks for their cigars to try and get more of your hard earned money. So it's up to you to navigate the blur and be smart about your purchases. Welcome back, guys. So we have uh, spoken about source being everything. And we have spoken about where not to buy your cigars. We have said with lots of conviction, I may add, um, never to buy your cigars at an American cigar shop. Uh, never buy your Cuban cigars at an American cigar shop. Never to buy Cuban cigars from somebody who claims that he has uh, a connection in Cuba not to buy Cuban cigars from somebody in an American cigar-centric uh, environment. And um, to stick with uh, sources that are touted in the Cuban cigar community that have a strong word-of-mouth reputation, whether it's Instagram, whether it's a private seller on a, in a club, or it's an uh, established overseas merchant, okay, the day may come in your Cuban cigar journey where you come across a uh, blatant misprint on a band or, in my case, a box of uh, K d'Orsay uh, number 50s, a 10-count box um, that I had shown on the channel a while back with the, uh, with the uh, K d'Orsay logo burnt upside down on the inner lid. Um, and uh, you just find uh, situations with Cuban cigars that you will not find with American market cigars. I mean, these are the people that um, the H. Upman uh, connoisseur A. The word connoisseur has been spelled wrong for over half a decade on the box and on the band of the cigars, yet they have never corrected it. And I'm not sure why they haven't done that. I mean, I can understand if, like, you know, they let it slip accidentally for the first run of bands and boxes and whatnot, but wouldn't you want to fix it after that? Um, especially because they use the word connoisseur in other places than they spell it correctly, you know, in the inner lid of the La Gloria Cubana box and whatnot. So why would you why would you want to spell connoisseur wrong in one place and correctly in another? I don't know, but you know, you're going to find moments like this where you just scratch your head that you just can't explain the uh the, the weirdness and us in the Cuban cigar community, we in the Cuban cigar community, we have a simple uh, a simple mantra and we say Cuba being Cuba. Okay? And uh, something that will come to you with experience is learning the difference between sloppy counterfeiting and Cuba being Cuba, okay? The uh, the K. Dorsey lid thing, that's Cuba being Cuba. 
Connoisseur A being spelled incorrectly. That's Cuba being Cuba. This guy on the Friends of Ibanos forum who got a box of Bolivar with no bands on any of the cigars. That's Cuba being Cuba. Okay, this guy who purchased a box of Esplendidos, but there was missing cigars and a couple of Siglo uh, 4s thrown in uh, in place of the missing Esplendidos, Cuba being Cuba, and probably somebody who was hitting the Havana Club on the assembly line. Um, so you guys come across something like this, and you see a misprint in a band, or you see something that catches your eye before you go in guns hot to the merchant who sold you the cigars and have a blowout with them or try to crucify them online do some research online and make sure that this isn't a common mistake do some research with the comrades on your cuban cigar uh club your forum your you know your connections now Okay, you want to do some research before you ever go to a merchant and imply that they may have sold you counterfeits, even if you're trying to be polite about it. Okay, um, and if you ask them for an explanation and they give you one, if this is a reliable, trustworthy vendor, then try to take their word for it. Okay, um, I promise you that you know if you take the time to join up with the Cuban Scar community online and you run into a scenario like this and you go seek their opinion about it, um, they will tell you one way or another what the answer is if you can't um, feel confident about deciphering it yourself, okay? Um, and uh, I had a, a buddy that I've known for a while on, uh, on Instagram contacted me last week and he got into a uh, argument with Mark from Cigar One over this cigar band. So this is an individual who has, uh, by his own volition, between him and his friend, spent over $12,000 in the last six months from Cigar One. And he was convinced that Cigar One sold him a fake box of H up and half Coronas on the basis of this band and the fact that the uh, wrappers were a different color than the five pack tin of H up and half Corona he had gotten previously from the same merchant. Mind you that you know, this guy has been using Cigar One for a long time. He, you know, almost every box of cigars he owns came from this retailer. And just like that, the trust evaporated. Just like that, he contacted Mark and, you know, got into an argument with him. And I didn't see the details of the conversation, but how it was explained to me was that um, this individual did not um, take Mark at his word about the provenance of the cigars and basically uh this guy dropped my name and you know basically kind of tried to strong arm mark into replacing his box of cigars by saying that i'm going to be showing this to the uh cuban cigar community and see what they think and at that point mark became uh mark became uh livid with him uh according to him and uh this guy may have potentially burnt a relationship that has been long and fruitful and productive for him and worked out very well for him uh, because he's worked up about Cuba being Cuba, okay? And this is an individual who does not participate in uh, online Cuban cigar forums or clubs or anything like that. Uh, he does not keep up with the counterfeits and the latest authentication features and whatnot. Um, he is a solo venture in his Habanos journey, and this is a consequence of doing so um, because you do not see enough of the scenarios to understand that, you know, in Cuba, they do not throw out bands on an $80 box of cigars uh, with a misprint. And we could see on the H. Upman band why it looks the way it does. It's because the calibration is off. You could see that 
the stamping is all there, the embossing is there. It's just that the alignment is off on the part. You know, you see the H. Upman uh, rising sun with the eye. Uh, the bottom part of the rising sun is printed below that little half moon backdrop for the uh, sunrise logo. Okay, and that's why the band looks like that. Um, understand that counterfeiters counterfeit cigars to make money. Okay, the H. Upman Half Corona is one of the most affordable Cuban cigars out there. It does not make sense for a box of H. Upman Half Coronas to be um, counterfeit on a site that is one of the most popular Cuban cigar vendors um, out there. And, um, you know, I know guys that do $12,000 worth of business in one transaction with Mark. Uh, Mark is not hurting for money at all. Uh, Cigar One is not hurting for business at all, okay? So they do not need to be faking any cigars, let alone a uh, box of H. Upman Half Corona. Uh, this guy burnt a, a long and fruitful relationship with an established uh, retailer because he found a misprint on a band, and instead of uh, researching it and asking uh, members of the Cuban cigar community before he went to the merchant, he decided to go to the merchant first, and he did not go well prepared uh, with any sort of facts or um, any sort of you know uh, opinions from individuals who could have immediately put him at ease. And I tried to put him at ease about it, and he wasn't buying it. He was, he didn't want to hear it. But um, you know that's his burden to bear. Uh, you know I can only show you the door. I can't make you walk through it. Okay, um, but you got to understand. Um, you're going to run into shit like this every now and then with Cuban cigars. So it's very imperative that you understand the phrase, Cuba being Cuba, okay? And, um, you know, it's really kind of a relative situation as well, okay? And H. Upman Band uh, having the calibration being off on one cigar is not anything to, you know, pitch a bitch about. And um, also the wrappers being a different color, you gotta understand. Also, that this is how. Also, how we know that this individual is not somebody who participates in the Cuban cigar community, because if he did, he would know that any cigar can be rolled in any factory at any time in Cuba. Okay, in the morning, uh, Taba Cuba shows up with the daily allotment of tobacco and the orders from the Ministry of Tobacco about what cigars are being rolled that day. So they could have been rolling uh, Monte Cristo number no. fours the day before, but the next day they're rolling Partagas shorts or they're rolling extra Cohiba. They, you know, like they could be rolling any cigar and Cuba has over 60 different types of wrapper. Uh, very few cigars have a strict standard as to what exact shade of wrapper goes on and i can tell you that the h upman half corona is not one of those cigars okay um i've i have a box of juan lopez selection number two and they have maduro colored wrappers on them and the examples that are going around now have claro colored wrappers on them um if you look at the cohiba talisman uh you'll see examples with maduro colored wrappers and you'll see examples with uh, rappers consistent on what you'd see on a current uh, Cohiba Robusto or something like that. So you can't take things like wrapper color and taste and whatnot into account. And you can't take the misprint of one band and, you know, run away with that and say that you were issued fakes, okay? Um, education is everything. So educate yourself with the people who are the most educated with Cuban cigars, and you will go a long way in this lifestyle, okay? All right, guys. So I want to thank you guys for sticking with me through this feature. I know that there was a lot of information that I covered, and um, it's uh, very important that you guys uh, heed to uh, some of these um, scenarios and uh, some of this advice that I had uh, talked about in this video because um, I uh, brought up um, this individual, Ray, who uh, I got into contact recently 
uh, who has um, recently uh, begun his Cuban cigar journey. And Ray, uh, the uh, fake uh, Cohiba Maduro um, that he was sent by an uh, individual on uh, Spirited Smoke um, when Ray used a uh, black light to uh, verify the band. And uh, you can see all the errors in the band, okay? Um, you know, we see that the, the squares are touching in wrong spots where they should never, ever be touching. Um, I know we spoke about Cuba being Cuba, but um, the difference is here is that Cohiba is treated to a different standard than other markas because Cohiba, um, the band, is designed to be the way it is um, for the specific purpose of thwarting counterfeiters. You understand what I'm saying? Okay, people aren't out there faking San Cristobal Principes. They're not out there faking a Chutman half coronas. And if they are, they're not doing it on any sort of large, rampant, viral scale. You understand? So, um, you know, there is a certain amount of uh, deviance allowed with Cohiba bands, but the only real deviance that is uh, acceptable and, the you know, um, for it to still be an authentic band would be that the uh, Taino logo can sometimes be uh, off-center or the... Uh, the uh, Taino logo isn't, uh, the embossing is not as strong, uh, but it's still always uh, defined very well on the fingerprint pattern, and the inner Taino Indian head is uh, always uh, clear and visible. Uh, even the uh, fakes that have replicated the pattern and whatnot, they have, um, they don't do it with the, quite the definition that the genuine bands do. So you'll, uh, you'll see... Um, if you look at enough Cohiba bands, you'll see what's acceptable deviation and what's not. But there's rarely much deviation, if at all, on a Cohiba band, okay? So to see, you know, these kinds of errors on a Cohiba band, it is um, very alarming. Uh, it's a red flag, a big fucking bright red flag, okay? There is no way that this band is authentic. And we could see in other photos uh, what I originally thought was light reflecting off the black light. Uh, those are actually squares bleeding through the holographic rockers on the top and bottom of the band. Um, that is absolutely not supposed to be like that. And this goes way beyond the bounds of uh, quality control for Verge Dog Premium Printing and, and uh, Habano Sese. Uh, there's absolutely no way that this is a legitimate band. But what is frightening is that this band has security squares that light up under the black light. This band has the alphanumeric code. Now, we have seen the alphanumeric code faked before with the finest Cuban cigars fakes, but they had used the wrong type of ink. And it appears that the counterfeiters have done that again here because the blue squares on a regular Cohiba band, um, on a genuine band, are visible under every type of UV light, whether it's a fluorescent black light, a 365 NM uh, UV flashlight, or a 395 NM UV flashlight. And um, while there's always differences in the way everything looks, on the 395, you're not going to really see the squares well at all, even on a genuine band, but the squares are flat out fucking invisible on the uh, the counterfeit band under the 395 NM light. And uh, they are visible under the 365 um, and the fluorescent black light. So it's important that to uh, tie this in with the rest of the feature, source is everything. It is more important than ever before. The Cohiba band has been copied soup to nuts now. Okay, it is, you know, I've never seen a single band that has done a perfect uh, replica as far as counterfeits go. I have yet to see a perfect replica where they hit every single station of the cross. Um, but at the same time, um, there is no... Uh, there's no end-all authenticity feature for a Cohiba band, okay? There is no, well, it has this. It has to be legit, okay? Because now every single thing has been copied, whether it's the uh, the holograms or it's, you know, the, the alphanumeric code or the UV security features. Like, it is very, very important that if you are a fan of Cohiba, that you pay absolute attention 
to the uh, source of your cigars. Stick with the reputable, uh, reputable sources. You will not have a problem. You will never have a need to get a black light. You understand? So I just wanted to share that piece of information with you guys because I feel like that's relevant information that should be uh, shared with everybody. And uh, you guys should really be aware of that because um, if you guys are the types to purchase more off of private sales than you do from uh, retail vendors, then uh, this is something to definitely take note of because just because you're smart about your purchases doesn't mean that the people that you buy from always are. So pay extra attention to what you're, uh, you know, what's being sold um, to you from, you know, uh, an individual, a private seller, and uh, just make sure that you keep your eyes open and be smart. Okay. Now, Anybody who has any questions for me, I will always do my best to help you in any way I can. Um, I'd appreciate that if you uh, had a question regarding this frequently asked uh, questions uh, feature. I'd appreciate if you uh, just check the index to make sure that I didn't answer the question on the video already. And um, I appreciate the support you guys have been giving me. And uh, 2020 is going to be a great year for this channel. I intend to continue to uh, generate, uh, content for you guys. And, uh, you know, we're going to take a look before we go of, uh, some re recent, uh, mail calls that I got. And, uh, that segues into, uh, my, uh, upcoming plans for the channel. Okay. Um, we are going to do a entire, um, a review on the entire brand of Cohiba, um, uh, just as a, a, a labor of love, um, uh, a personal labor of love because I, I love Cohiba and everything. Uh, I finally got my hands on a box of Maduro 5. Uh, you, you'll see the uh, 10 count box of Cohiba Secretos that I got recently. Um, so I now have boxes from every single line in the brand. Uh, so I am looking forward to uh, doing a, uh, not like a brand history, so to speak, because I, I think Dr. Joe really kind of covered. Um, you know the meat and potatoes of the story of Cohiba, but um, I'd like to uh, do a breakdown of the different lines and vitolas and whatnot. I think there's some things I could add to that, and uh, really kind of make it interesting. And and you know, uh, since you guys like recommendation videos so much, um, I'm going to be giving my recommendations for the brand of Cohiba, whether it's the Siglo line or the Linea Classica. And, um, you know, I'll also have some input now and be able to show you guys a box of Maduro 5 and uh, as well as, you know, the box of uh, BHK 52 that I have also that you guys have seen in Vendor Bowl. So I want you guys to stay safe out there. And, um, you know, anybody that's out there, you know, that's uh, considered to be a, a fellow essential employee like myself, uh, I've been reporting to work daily still. Uh, as a utility worker, um, so anybody that's uh, out there in the healthcare field, uh, anybody in uh, law enforcement, um, anybody that's out there uh, in uh, transportation or uh, food service industry, uh, you know, stay safe, guys. Wishing you uh, peace and blessings and good health, and uh, hopefully the world will go back to normal soon. I hope you guys enjoyed your little escape from the world for the last couple of hours. And I uh, hope you had a nice cigar. So stay well and smoke well. And uh, I'm always here for you guys in any way I can be. Uh, just, uh, you know, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And um, if you haven't done so already, please uh, like and share. And uh, I'll see you guys soon. Take care.